This is my lathe. It's a Myford Super 7, manufactured around 1970. Uh, Myfords are probably the best known of the small British hobbyist lathes, so they're not necessarily the best. And because of that, they do sometimes command quite high prices. The one advantage of Myfords is that uh, spares are still readily available. So even with a 47-year-old lathe like this, I can still get any spare parts that I might need albeit at a bit of a high price. Now owning a lathe is a bit like having a mistress. You're forever lashing out uh, lots of money on accessories which you hope are going to improve the performance. And of course you're always hoping that the wife doesn't find out how much you've spent. Now what I'm going to do is uh, spend quite a lot of money on digitising this lathe. I'm going to fit a digital readout system the reason I'm doing that is this lathe being manufactured in 1970 is still on the imperial system and I like to work in metric units. There are a number of digital readout packages on the market at various prices, usually between two and four hundred pounds. I chose a kit from a UK company called Machine DRO. It's one of the more expensive options, but I think it has a number of advantages. Firstly, it's a kit specifically optimised for the Myford Super 7, and it's claimed it can be fitted without any drilling or other mods to the lathe. Secondly, it's a UK company, so if I have any problems with the installation, I could call them and hopefully speak to an English-speaking technician. Thirdly, the documentation supplied is very clear, clear and comprehensive. I'll show you some of it here. Here we go, this is the fitting instructions that come with it. List of everything you need and how to do everything. I think probably even I can follow this. The kit uses magnetic scales which are generally thought to be more robust and resistant to swarf and coolant than glass scales and are fitted in a way that further protects them from damage. Most of the fitting is done on the back of the machine. Now since I spent a lot of time getting the twist out of the lathe bed, I'm not keen on unbolting it again. But fortunately, this panel here unbolts quite easily so I can access the back of the machine without actually having to move the lathe. Well, I've taken this rear panel off so I've now got easy access to the back of the lathe and I've taken the paint off this ground face here which originally was for fitting a taper turning attachment but I don't have one and uh, there's no chance of getting one these days. Well, these are some of the parts that need to be fitted. As you can see they're all nicely labelled up with the uh, serial numbers of the various components on them. Now these Meister lathes, at least the old ones, are um, imperial thread so you're going to need a set of imperial spanners. Okay I'll carry on with the fitting. I'm not going to show you every stage, uh, just the ones of interest where I might go wrong and possibly you might as well. I had intended to only film those parts of the installation where I'd run into a problem. Well actually I didn't run into any problems at all. The uh, instructions are very clear and concise and everything went according to the instructions. Uh, this fitting here of this sensor, you do need a bit of patience to get it aligned parallel to the bed. But uh, once that's done, everything is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, this sensor is very well protected, it has a stainless steel cover plate to it and also this aluminium moulding here which should protect it against swarf. The cross slide sensor here is not quite so well protected. I don't know if you can see here but the magnetic strip is down here underneath this stainless steel cover strip but that's all the protection there is, so I imagine you'd need to be quite careful when you're machining cast iron that the dust doesn't stick to this magnetic strip. The advertising for this uh, kit does say that you don't need any drilling. 
Well, that's true that you don't need to drill anything at all on the lathe, but you do actually need to drill. You need to drill out and retap two 5mm holes in one of the brackets and also drill a couple of 5mm clearance holes in another bracket. And of course, if you've got a lathe, then it's almost certain you've got to drill somewhere around. I did have a few bits left over, as you can see here. I'm not quite sure what they're for. Maybe I'll find out when I uh, fit the readout unit onto the back panel. Now what I have to do is refit the back panel in here so that I can screw the arm for the readout unit to it. So I'll check back when I've got everything fitted up and running. So here it is with the readout set up on this swinging arm here. Let's see if it works. In the carriage transport and cross slide and zero. Okay, so far so good. Now there are quite a lot of functions on here which I haven't investigated yet, and I don't plan on doing that today, mainly because it's minus three Celsius in here. So what I'll do is, when I've had a chance to play with it later on in the week, I'll update the video with my impressions.